Jim is a previously healthy, active man. He underwent an uncomplicated heart bypass surgery a month ago. A few days after surgery, he began complaining of shortness of breath. Within a week, Jim was unable to walk and had difficulty swallowing food or liquid. His doctors could find neither a cause nor a treatment for his condition. As Jim worsened, his doctors referred him to hospice for care of what they considered to be an incurable terminal illness. Jim is physically and emotionally exhausted, so short of breath that he will not let himself sleep for fear of never waking up. Jim's wife asked that he be transferred to another hospital to be evaluated by a neurologist. The neurologist suspects myasthenia gravis, a condition in which Jim's immune system has mysteriously begun attacking nerves and muscles throughout his body. This immune attack blocks the actions of acetylcholine, the chemical messenger that is released from nerve endings and crosses the neuromuscular junction to bind to muscle, which results in muscular contraction. Open your eyes as wide as you can open them. And give us a big smile. Okay? And say this for me. Massachusetts Fish Commission. Massachusetts Fish Commission. Okay. Lift your arm up over your head for me, your left arm. Okay, and let's, don't let me push it down. Okay? No, I can't do Well, we'll see what we can do. All right. And I want to check your breathing here. One finger knocks my arm down. I know. Well, we're hopefully going to fix that here. It used to be. Take a big breath in. In. Do it again. Okay, so you're getting about up to here. Less than 500. To test for myasthenia gravis, the neurologist is about to administer edrophonium or tensilon, which will temporarily increase the amount of acetylcholine available to Jim's muscles. If the diagnosis of myasthenia gravis is correct, we should see a significant improvement in Jim's strength. How are you feeling? Oh, yeah, I'm still seeing two, two windows down there. Still seeing two? Yeah. You're opening your eyes wider. Yeah, it's not, something's, something's happening here. I don't know what. Smile. Big smile. Say this Massachusetts Fish Commission. Massachusetts Fish Commission. Okay. <clears throat> Take a big breath in here as much as you can. See that? Go yeah. all the way up to there. Do it again. Lift that arm up. Keep it up. <laughs> what a difference! You're a genius. <laughs> Pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. Say it again, Massachusetts Fish Commission. Massachusetts Fish Commission. <laughs> Squeeze your eyes tight. Keep them tight. Let's do that breathing thing again. I see singles now. <laughs> seen only one of them? A lot of us, huh? Oh, this is hard. <laughs> Even a blind squirrel can find an acorn once in a while. That's what my teacher told me. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Further lab testing confirmed very high levels of antibodies to several parts of the neuromuscular junction, consistent with the diagnosis of myasthenia gravis. Jim was treated with peridostigmine or mestinon, a medicine similar to Tensilon, but in a longer-acting pill form. Mestinon does not stop the immune attack on the nerve and muscle. It only helps to replace the resulting acetylcholine deficiency. After six months, Jim slowly took himself off of the medication. Although his antibody levels remained very high, his symptoms completely resolved and have never returned. Jim's disease ended as mysteriously as it had begun. <laughs>